Welcome back, Plymouth North, and thank you for joining us live for the last episode of PNN this year. Today, we will explore the growth and integration happening within the Friends Without Borders program. Then, we keep the Plymouth North community. And we follow a day in the life of one of Plymouth North's most beloved icons. Get ready, Plymouth North. It's, it's time, time for, for PNN. PNN. Good morning, Plymouth North. I'm Skylar Wodzinski. And I'm DJ Proctor. We're glad you're tuning in to the live finale of PNN for the 2022 school year. We wanted to make the most out of our last episode with you all, so we've been asking all week on our Instagram what your favorite memory was from this year. If you haven't gotten to respond yet, now's the chance to do so live. We'll read off some of your answers at the end of today's episode. Seniors, we're in the home stretch now. Only one more week until we're done. As for everyone else, we hope you enjoy the next month of school. Students attending the Plymouth Public Schools for years to come will be impacted by the upcoming redistricting plan. By doing this, the district hopes to achieve more equitable access to resources for all students. We go to Maggie to learn more about how the puzzle pieces will fit for Plymouth's educational future. The long and lengthy process of redistricting has received a lot of attention in the recent months. Plymouth Public Schools has been listening to the, all the feedback and adjusted the plans in order to welcome and please all that are affected and involved. So the last time that Plymouth went through a redistricting exercise was in 2010-11, I believe. This time we really see the need um, to do some adjustments because we've seen a declining enrollment, particularly at the elementary level. So we've gone down about 14.5% over the last 10 years. The company that redistricting was outsourced to, ABGEO, was able to properly assess the criteria and data that they collected in order to formulate plans to present to the public and the school committee. Our company, um, ABGEO, um, provides support to school districts uh, with, um, with data. So we basically you know, get all the data from the school district. Um, we use additional data sets to do all the mapping and uh, providing the information to the school district to meet the District. It was um, interesting because at the beginning we had not considered closing hedge at all. But as the you know, um, the, the district looked at the you know, at the financials as well and what makes sense and you know how, how do we justify this and um, I think that's what got presented. Besides just the data that was collected to create these plans, the public was able to express their thoughts and opinions on the possible plans especially regarding the closing of the school committee meeting on April 12th and April 25th. The community showed up and showed their support for their school. One of the things that I feel like gives North Plymouth the identity that it has, well, two of them, the first is the fire station um, and the second is um, Hedge Elementary School. Um, I feel like North Plymouth is um, probably the most um, diverse uh, village of Plymouth and I think that um, taking away the place where um, many of our marginalized immigrant um, non-English speaking families and low-income families live um, is is targeting. It is an ethnically, socio-economically diverse community and it's really like a family. The size of the school, the location of the school, having it be kind of a center pillar of the community 
it, closing Hedge School would affect not only the students who go there, but the community at large. And, and we had community members with no vested interest in Hedge speak tonight in favor of keeping it open. I want Hedge to stay open because it's just a good school, a really good school. Uh, I want Hedge to stay open mainly, not just that I just got there, to just like, the teachers are amazing and they help so many kids. One of, one of oh, actually two of the three options um, were the possibility of closing Hedge Elementary School, but that certainly uh, was taken off the table. One thing I'd like to say is I think this process, while it's been redistricting, can be emotional. Um, people have a tie to their school, which is wonderful. I think it speaks to how um, connected they feel to their school community. So, you know, you always anticipate that any change um, is hard. So this process is not about making things difficult for families or for, for students, but trying to make it more equitable across the, the school districts. Plymouth School Committee is working hard to come up with a decision for the plan that will both benefit the education of students and ease stress on parents. And the town as a whole is confident that this plan will be beneficial for everyone. I'm Margaret Ladd reporting live for PNN. Thank you, Maggie and Ryan, for helping everyone further understand the intricacies of these prospective new plans. Since 2018, the North community has been glad to welcome a unique kind of staff member to the Special Education Department. He has prestige. Anna and Amanda pause to tell us more about this helpful hound. We all know him and love him for his dedicated support and service to Plymouth North. He is our furry, four-legged friend, Beamer. Beamer is Plymouth North's assistance dog who was brought into the school after helping at Nathaniel Morton Elementary School in Miss Keene's special education classroom. Beamer can be seen all around the school helping students in the special education program, project growth, and anyone who needs some help. His presence provides comfort, support, and encouragement to everyone he works with. So for my kids that are really escalated or really upset or really sad or there's something really stressful that day, he will snuggle with them, he will play ball with them, he will do things like that. For some of my kids that have more things and help. Beamer started training at eight weeks old in the Needs World Class Service Dogs program. By the time I got Beamer, he had already trained for 18 months, um, 10 weeks. We're told he learned them in two because he's super food motivated. After extensive interviews and undergoing training sessions herself, Ms. Keene was able to bring Beamer into her classroom. Beamer was students in Ms. Keene's classroom. He was also taught to work through tantrums and conflicts that arose between classmates. In 2018, Beamer moved to Plymouth North along with Ms. Keene to help students at the high school level. Beamer is now eight years old and has continued to carry out his training that he learned at eight weeks old. This year, Beamer started going back to his roots. One day a week, Beamer goes to Nathaniel Morton Elementary School to work with younger kids after school. Beamer just fills everybody's day with happiness um, and a little extra snuggle. Um, so we were really excited to have Beamer join us, even if it's for a brief amount of time. For us, it's beyond just students who are uh, identified in special education. It's really Beamer's available for anybody uh, who needs them. Just like social anxiety and that kind of stuff. So animals kind of help me. So whenever I get stressed, Beamer helps me like, calm down. Beamer is, is just so well loved. And it's funny, Miss Kane shared the morning that she was going to be bringing Beamer here and she said, Beamer, do you want to see the little kids today? And he jumped up with excitement. So I think Beamer knows when he comes home too and he seems to know exactly. Beamer is a beloved addition to the Plymouth Public Schools community. And thanks. Thank you to Amanda and Hannah for giving Beamer his long overdue spotlight. The Friends Without Borders initiative has begun to invoke an exciting Brooke dive into the club that embraces the spirit of the great American melting pot. Friends Without Borders is a new initiative program. This club helps to unite ESL and non-ESL students within the school. With the growing population of kids in the program, Friends Without Borders hopes to foster more connections between students at Plymouth North. We're looking to start a club called Friends Without Borders, and the idea behind the club is that we're going to create a space where students can come and do arts and crafts activities, um, maybe have a little food after school, and form the friendships that will um, help my students bridge their experience out to the larger school community. I think that Friends Without Borders 
will be a great opportunity for students to learn about different cultures right here in their, the very walls of this school. We have many different kinds of students here at Plymouth North. Um, lots of different personalities, lots of different skills, lots of different passions. Students in the ESL program who are learning their second, third, or sometimes fourth language will be able to develop their speaking, reading, and learning skills while also making friends and connections within the greater school community. Ah, tentar se socializar mais, conversar, isso ajuda muito, porque às vezes a gente fica triste por não poder fazer novas amizades. No, neles tentar ajudar a gente ou conversar, comunicar alguma coisa, mesmo que a gente não entenda tudo, é importante. Well, I noticed that there was a lack of inclusion, like in our school, and like joining like English learners at our school. And I know that from personal experience, like in elementary school, I felt excluded a lot from my peers as well. So I decided that at North, having like a community where people could like be friends without like that exclusion kind of gap would be nice be a leader in our school community. My aspirations for, you know, for this club and this group and, you know, for the program would be, be that the students' strengths really have a chance to shine here in our school and I think they have in many ways and continue to see that happen. And I think one thing that would be great is that the Friends Without Borders will bring together students that have different cultures, different languages, different experiences. With the growing ESL program, students like Yuna are working to create connections throughout the school. Be sure to continue to show up to Friends Without Borders meetings on Thursdays in Mr. Carpenter's room. Reporting live for PNN, I'm Brooke Holmes. Thank you to Brooke and Delia for enlightening us on these newfound relationships. Our gymnastics team has made so many strides this year, and senior captain Brooke Reardon going to compete at nationals is truly the icing on the cake. Jacob and Miranda give us insight into her acrobatic adventures. Each May in is one of a handful of gymnasts in the state of Massachusetts to earn a spot in the prestigious competition. Um, I started gymnastics when I was two. My mom put me on a parent taught class. I can be all around, so I can be all four events, which is bars, beam, floor, and ball. I probably hit the biggest roadblock freshman year. Um, I dropped down the less competitive program at my old gym. And I just lost the motivation to keep working these skills because I felt like why was I working these new skills when I couldn't compete them and they weren't worth anything. So I just lost the motivation to go to practice. However, she's been able to find support along the way through talented coaching. I have a lot of coaches and teammates to thank for getting me here. One of those coaches, Eileen Grande, has been the Plymouth School's gymnastics coach since 2012 and has been a driving force. He's always been there for me and trying to get me to senior nationals since freshman year. She's been pushing and she's done everything she possibly can to get me to go to nationals and I'm really grateful for that. I've known Brooke four years since 2018. Well, her training's always been really intense, but it just got more intense. She works out about 20 hours a week. The best part about coaching Brooke is she's a great gymnast. She takes direction, she listens, she makes corrections, and she wants to do really well and, you know, be one of the top, so it shows. It's just been a pleasure working with Brooke, and she's worked very, very hard for many, many years. She deserves to go to the senior national meet. The most important factor in the development of any young athlete is support. Michelle Reardon, Brooke's mother, has always pushed her to succeed. Brooke has been interested in gymnastics ever since she could walk. Most of Brooke's practices are held at the gym. Um, for the past few years, she's been practicing at least 16 hours a week. She's very dedicated to her sport, and any opportunity she has to practice extra, she definitely takes advantage. Overall, my husband and I are super proud of Brooke. Um, she has worked so hard over the years to achieve her goals. Um, Gymnastics has always been her passion. She's stopped a couple of times to try some other sports, but she's always come back to gymnastics. Uh, I'm most proud of her the past couple of years. Um, since COVID, she's just realized how much the sport means to her, and she's made a lot of sacrifices to be successful, and we're really proud of her. My mother has always been supportive of my gymnastics career and even when I tell her I want to stop she makes me I'm Jacob Petrarca. Thank you Jacob and Miranda.
We have good faith in Brooke representing Plymouth North and the gymnastics team this weekend at Nationals. You may have heard of a gray-haired fellow who teaches social studies on the third floor, but did you know that there are also two other parallels that can call Plymouth North home? We go to Delilah and Lexi to check out the family where blue and white is in their blood. Mr. Perlow was a teacher that every Plymouth North student should be familiar with by now, but the faces of new Perlows in the building may seem slightly surprising. Mr. Perlow has been teaching for 26 years, and before North, taught at PCIS. His passion for teaching has inspired both of his children to follow in his footsteps. Since Jonah and Mrs. Perlow were young, he has worked hard to show them the importance of education and how to keep things lighthearted. So I always knew that I wanted to be a history teacher. I love um, social justice and history, so teaching was a perfect combination of them. Uh, I never, ever, ever expected to be at Plymouth North. This is the crazy thing. I sub at both the high schools, so I sub at both North and South. I work with EdTV, who's based at North, but they work at the whole school. So I'm kind of like, I'm a free agent. I kind of go all over the place. So I always knew that I wanted to be a history teacher. I love um, social justice and history. I never, ever, ever expected to be at Plymouth North. I always wanted to be a teacher, but I didn't like any gen eds that I took in high school. So then I went to the tech studies program at South and I went through like the graphics, like the film and video uh, tech, and I absolutely loved it. So I was like, this is what I want to teach. So I get to see them at home and I get to see them at school. So I just can't get away from them. Um, the best thing I think I like over and over is that the kids and people are always like, Jonah. They love Jonah. It's honestly been an amazing experience. Um, he's been so supportive. And then when they see Miss Perlow, they'll be like, how's Jonah? I feel like anytime I need something, I can just come down his room to the hallway. And, and everyone loves Jonah. And then this Perlow gets all mad and he's like, no one likes me. I have a sister. I am surrounded by such funny, wonderful, awesome human beings. My favorite moments are just uh, driving home with him. About a lot of things and Miss Perlow gets really mad that we leave her out. But other than that, I really can't think of any good moments I've shared with my... The thing about teaching at Plymouth North High School um, is being in this wonderful uh, third floor hallway. Um, Mr. Hales makes me laugh every single day. I call him oftentimes my work dad, because uh, sometimes my real dad uh, ignores me uh, at school. Sadie is loud and scary. She even has more enthusiasm than Dana. It's a very enthusiastic family, I have to admit. And then Jonah Perlo, my darling Jonah Perlo. It's been great having him here as a as an Ed TV intern. I know he's been subbing a lot, and he just like keeps to his own drum, and like he has his whole life, and I, I love that about him. As the new Perlos have joined our community, their family tree has been a little confusing. Since uh, we have a few different stories going on, uh, it has been a little confusing. Uh, but I feel like now this will clear everything up. Um, and no, Mr. Perlo is not 72. One brother, one sister, and then Mr. Perlo and my mom. Mr. Perlo and his family have managed to make such a positive impact on North. Each Perlo expresses a love for education and shines in their area of expertise in order to make North a better place. Reporting live for PNN, I'm Lexi Rary. Our school really wouldn't be the same without the Pearls, would it, DJ? No. There wouldn't be nearly as many laughs or smiles without them. As we wind down our classes and set our sights on summer, we tackle the elephant into the room. Where are Plymouth North seniors going after the Caps fly on June 4th? We walk the halls to get our answer. I am Robert Lee, I'm a project of last year. I'm going to Union College where I'm majoring in biochemistry and computer science. I'm going to Salisbury University, I'm majoring in business and fine arts and I'm swimming. I'm going to Plymouth State University and majoring in nursing. I'm going to the University of Oklahoma, I'm majoring in marketing. I'm going to Johnson Wales University for exercise and sports science. I'm going to be an electrician next year. I'm going to Kane University for Spanish education. We're going to UMass and Eisenberg School of Management. I'm going to Gannon University and I'm going for their direct entry physician assistant program. Go Knights! I'm going to UConn for mathematics and philosophy. I'm majoring in nursing. I'm majoring in management. I'm majoring in nursing. And we're going to UMass Boston. Hey guys, I'm going to Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles for biology. I'm going to go to college and I'm majoring in political science. I'm going to Coastal Carolina University and I'm majoring in marine science. 
I'm going to Middlebury College. I'm gonna be studying Middle Eastern politics, Arabic, and studio art. Go Panthers! I'm going to UMass Amherst and I'm majoring in biomedical sciences and minoring in computer science. I'm going to UMass Amherst and majoring in marketing. Go Eisenberg! I'll be going to Bridgewater State University to play soccer and my major is still undecided. I'm going to Quinnipiac University and pursuing a doctorate in physical therapy. I'm going to St. Anselm College and I'll be majoring in forensic science. I'm going to George Washington University and in the Elliott School of International Affairs. I'm going to UMass Amherst to major in economics with a concentration in microeconomics. Go Minutemen. I'm going to West Virginia University for business. I'm going to Hofstra University for filmmaking. I will be attending Brandeis University to study neuroscience and public health. Roll dice, baby. I'm going to Temple University and I'm studying media studies and production. I will be attending UMass Amherst to study political science. Go Minutemen. I will be going to Methodist University and I'm going to be studying professional golf management. I'm going to York St. John University and I'm studying film and television production. I'm going to the University of Oregon and I'm studying global studies with a concentration in peace, conflict, and diplomacy. With the school year coming to an end, there are many events happening that everyone should know about. Tonight at 5.30 is the Tech Program Senior Showcase. Every senior in a tech program at North must attend. Underclassmen, we're halfway through Term 4. Check Aspen to make sure you don't have any Ds or Fs. Tomorrow is also the Spring a cappella Concert. Be there by 7 p.m. to support your fellow Eagles. May 25th is Senior Hypnotist Night. Food is served at 6.30 and the show starts at 7. Yearbooks will be distributed the next day, Thursday, May 26th. Pretty Day is May 27th, the last day of school for seniors. Get ready, juniors. Prom is that night. Doors open at 6.30. Graduation practice for seniors will be held on May 31st, the day of senior prom, and June 2nd from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Freshmen, meet at 7 a.m. on June 18th for your trip to Six Flags. Have fun! Lastly, make sure to wish Delia Joyce a happy birthday today. PNN wouldn't be the same without you. Reporting live for PNN, I'm Miranda Coleman. Now back to Skylar and DJ. Look up our Instagram story this week to ask about your favorite memories from this year, and here are a few. Jaden says, playing pig with Mr. Hales and friends. Julia says, Mr. O'Mara, no explanation needed. That's fair. Mm. Katie says, playing Foursquare in the courtyard. Those are always the best days. Really are. Thank you so much for joining us today, and be sure to follow the new social media handles for a new season of PNN coming this fall. Thank you to everyone who helped us along the way in 2022. From Mrs. Terry and Mr. McNamara to the rest of the EdTV staff, we are so... I'm, I'm DJ Proctor. And I'm Skylar Wodzinski. Farewell, Plymouth North.